Have you ever taken an absolute banger photo, uploaded it to Instagram and thought, that is not how I remember that photo looking when I edited it? Well, there's a complete logical reason for this, and that is because when you export your images at the highest resolution possible, some of these images are up to 10 megabytes depending on your camera. And when you upload this to Instagram, it has to shrink that size to a smaller file which requires getting rid of some data out of your images. In doing this, it rips away key features like contrast, sharpness, color saturation, and even hue of your colors. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to correctly export your images from Lightroom Classic to maintain high quality images across Facebook, Instagram, the World Wide Web, and of course, prints. Also, we're gonna learn how to make these export setting presets. That way, every time you export, you don't have to rewatch this video a thousand times. You just watch it once, make the presets, and it's done in one click. Also, I'm just filming in the van today, so this is what it's like living in a van full time. You don't always get the luxurious studio, but instead you get a camper van. So, welcome. All right, so jumping straight in, we're in the develop tab in Lightroom here. Navigate to the photo that you wanna export. I am doing this in the develop module, but it's the same process if you're in the library module as well. To export this photo, you're gonna go up to file, go down to export. Now you've got a ton of different options here. So the first thing we'll talk about is exporting for social media, in particular, Instagram. So let's make a Instagram preset first. What I usually like to do here is export my photos straight to the desktop. You can change this if you want, but I like to export to the desktop and then delete it once it's on my phone. You could also put them in a subfolder labeled Instagram, for example, and that way all your images are gonna go straight and live on that folder. I'm gonna export to the desktop. We are not going to add this to a catalog. We are not going to change settings here on existing files. Keep it as asks what to do. Now let's go down to rename the file name. If you wanted to rename this, you could do a custom name if you want, or you could do when the data was created, whatever you like. A lot of the times it's not really important. Don't worry about this personally, just uncheck this box, move on to the next. We're not gonna do anything in the video because we're exporting photos here. Then we'll go down to file settings. Within file settings for something like Instagram, I wanna export at 100% for the quality and I want to export it as a JPEG. For the color space, I'm gonna do sRGB. I'm not gonna limit the file size. Then we'll go down to image sizing. We're going to resize to fit. Now, as of making this video, Instagram prefers things that are 1080 pixels wide, or if you're editing a portrait image, that's the one that's straight up and down, not long ways or in a four by five ratio, as they say, you can go 1350 tall, but it's totally up to you. Generally, I keep it at 1080 and it works great for me, regardless of if it's a portrait or a landscape or whatever. We're going to do a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So we've got a long edge of 1080 pixels, with 72 pixels per inch. So we can do sharpening as well if you like to sharpen your images as you export them. So you've got options to sharpen for screen, matte, or glossy paper. We're gonna go with the screen with the amount on standard. And personally, I actually don't use this too much, but there are certain cases where I do. For Instagram, this is one of them. For metadata, this doesn't really matter because you're gonna be posting to Instagram, but generally I turn it on all the time and put on all the metadata. Because sometimes you can put images in your phone and then send them to a friend or whatever. And before you know it, some dude named Jimbo in Japan is uploading your images and using them on his website. So I always conclude the metadata. So moving on to watermarking, I don't watermark my images, but if there's something you wanna do, you have a really cool logo and you wanna include it, this is where you're gonna do it. So check watermark and then you can adjust and choose whatever watermark you want. And then post-processing, we're not gonna to touch anything here. So now that's basically how we're gonna export for Instagram. But to make sure this pops up every time we do it, we have to do something more. So over here, we click let's do add, and then we're gonna have a folder for user presets. The preset name is going to be Instagram. Now, when I click create, that Instagram preset is here every single time that I wanna use it. So when I go to export a photo, say in two weeks time, and I want it specifically for Instagram, Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Instagram preset is there. Now let's move on to Facebook. And I know a lot of you hip youngsters don't use Facebook anymore, but for us old people, we still use Facebook. So let's create a preset for Facebook as well. So a preset for Facebook is very, very similar in settings. If I want to rename it, I could rename it here, make it end of Facebook. So you know, this photo is for Facebook when you export it. Whatever you want to do, you can do it here. Nothing on video. We'll go down to file settings. Same thing, JPEG, sRGB, 100% on the quality. But this time, ba -ba -da -ba, we're changing something. This time we're going resize to fit and the long edge is either going to be 1350 if it's a portrait or 1200 if it's a landscape. It's different. So generally I just use 1200 for landscape or a portrait. It works great for me. Sorry, Mark Zuckerberg, if this somehow stops up your Facebook algorithm, but it does work great for me. So we'll do 1200 with a resolution at 72. 
we're not going to show up on the screen again. Don't worry about the metadata. We'll keep it the same. Watermark, do as you please, and no post-processing. So that's all the changes done for the Facebook preset. We basically add it exactly the same way we did Instagram, except this time we call it Facebook. Wham, bam, thank you, man. That's two presets done. Let's move on to the third one for the World Wide Web. The big World Wide Web. So a lot of you guys probably only use social media, but there are a few of you, I'm sure, that have a website and you want to upload these images to your website to showcase to your family, your friends, your new client that's incoming, your wedding photographers, whatever it may be, this is how you do it. And when you're uploading to a website, there is actually a lot to think about. But the main thing you want to think about is that you don't want to upload the highest quality image. It's going to load slowly, so we'll just downsize that image so it still has great quality, but it's just not as large. So now I'm going to change it to a new subfolder called World Wide Web. On my desktop, that way, whenever you export an image straight from Lightroom, it goes to the World Wide Web folder. And it's really easy to navigate away from your social media folder. Then we're going on to File Settings. So for web, I like to do 90% quality. You're not really going to see a big difference between 100% and 90%. You would if you really zoomed in, but you do see a big difference in file size, which really helps. Then you can adjust the image sizing. Now, I like to do 2,000 pixels on my website because I might want to do a full screen image or I might want to do like a gallery style image. Either way, I want them to be sharp enough so people can view them very easily and they look great. So output sharpening again for me, just going to skip this step. I don't like to output sharpen my images, but if you do, please click here. No watermark for me, no post-processing, but if you like your watermark, this is where you do it. And that's what I'm going to do for the web. So here we go. We just click add and we're going to type in World Wide Web. We have a web preset just like that. We have three quick and easy presets that we just created to easily export your image in one simple flow swoop. Yeah, Jesus. I turned all the fans off because I didn't want to interrupt the audio, so there's no actually movement in here, and it is getting stanky. Now, the fourth thing you want to export your photos for is to print them to give as gifts. So let's make a new subfolder here called Prints. Okay, moving on, we don't need to rename this for the print shop. Pretty sure they know what's going on. For print, we definitely want 100% on the quality. You can export in JPEG or TIFF. I would recommend JPEG, however, as it's easy to deal with and it's a smaller in size, especially if you have to upload it to a print shop, which is an online print form. Maybe a TIFF file is a lot larger and it won't upload as easy. A lot of people think that printing JPEG images aren't as good as TIFF, and they have somewhat of a reason, but someone not. I generally print everything out of mine as JPEG and it turns out great, but every time you save a JPEG, it compresses that file a little bit more. Whereas a TIFF stays the same size, you have all this data that you can use. So in saying that, for this example, of course, I want to give you the best quality, the best advice. We're going to go with TIFF. So select TIFF, TIFF, select TIFF. I reckon we should call this preset Tiffany. It makes sense. TIFF, Tiffany, print, 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 Tiffany, print TIFF. Not bad, Lucky. not bad. On TIFF, we're going to, I really can't say that anymore. On TIFF, on TIFF, 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 On TIFF, we're going to do no compression here, and then we're going to go Adobe RGB 1998 color space, bit depth at 16 bits per component. That's going to give you a lot better colors than 8 bits per component. But if you think 8 bit is for you, by all means, shoot for the moon, but I highly recommend 16 bits per component. So we're going to keep on scrolling down to image sizing. Now you definitely don't want to downsize your image for print. What I recommend is actually resizing for the size of the print that you're making. So we can change here pixels to inches and we can do width and height. So let's say we want to resize this image to like 30 inches by 20 inches since it's three by two ratio. It makes it super easy for me to explain it to you. I think we would actually need a width of 30 and a height by 20 since it is a landscape rotation. So you could do that. And one thing is that you have to make sure that you do your mouse right right here especially if it's not on a perfect three by two ratio now you do want a resolution of 300 here depending on your print shop if you're printing on a canvas sometimes the print shop will say they want it at 150 pixels per inch but generally they all accept 300 pixels per inch at least in my experience anyway however resizing the image like i just showed you creates somewhat of a problem with this preset because when you select it it'll be made for that particular size of print but we can just change the name a little bit so that it reminds you to check the size of the print. So moving on down, I'm not going to sharpen for either matte or glossy paper. I'll add metadata because you never know with people that try and steal your images or something. So if we want to click add and type print TIFF, don't forget TIFF because that is the most important. It's just a great word to say, TIFF. Print TIFF. Print TIFF. Print TIFF. Print TIFF. It's cool. So we'll create print TIFF. And what I put on the end of it is just a little hyphen and put do image resizing. That way, when I select it, I know, okay, I have to resize my image for this. So there you have it, four presets made very easily. If you didn't make the presets, I highly recommend going back, re-watching the parts, pausing it, then make them at the same time that I'm doing it in the video. It makes it super easy and simple. 
and generally it's going to save you a lot of time when you have to export your images out of Lightroom. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it in the van, please let me know below because I'm not sure if I should somehow create a studio or if I should do more videos in the van or you want to check out our other YouTube channel which is all about van life, please I'll leave a card up here so you can check it out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.